Welcome to Cooking with the Seasons. In this video series, we will cover a broad range of topics related to healthy cooking and preparation of all the beautiful produce you'll find in your CSA box. The key purpose of this class is to help you make the most of the produce you receive in your weekly box. We will learn ways to prepare snacks, sides, and meals that taste good, contain less sugar and salt, and use as little of your time and money as possible. For produce you can't use right away, we will present ways to preserve food for later use. As we move into fall, the local vegetables available at the market and in our boxes are changing. Summer produce like juicy tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, and zucchini are being replaced with heartier, dense veggies like winter squash, root vegetables, green beans, and leafy greens. This week, we will be talking about nutritional balance and using my plate to encourage us to eat from all five food groups every day. The foods we choose to eat can help us stay healthy now and into the future. Our food choices matter and they do add up. Choosing to eat foods from all five food groups help make sure we're getting all the nutrients our bodies need. Fruits, vegetables, grains, protein foods, and dairy foods. Fill half your plate with fruits and vegetables at mealtime. This includes fresh, frozen, dried, or canned fruits and vegetables. Make half of your grains whole. Start your day with whole grains, like oatmeal or your favorite whole grain cereal. For added flavor and crunch, add some fruit or a handful of nuts. Stuck in the same old protein rut, try adding fish, seafood, or poultry once or twice a week to mix things up. Add milk or dairy to recipes or on their own as a side or a snack. Most Americans don't get enough vegetables in their day. For adults, we should be eating at least two and a half to three cups of vegetables every day. That can be raw, cooked, juiced, or in the form of leafy greens. Like we tell our younger students, eating a rainbow of fruits and vegetables helps us get a variety of different important nutrients. For example, carrots and other orange vegetables help our eyes and our bones. Red veggies help our hearts. Green vegetables keep your bones strong and your teeth strong. Blue and purple vegetables keep our bladder healthy and our memory strong, important as we're getting older. Varying your vegetable routine can also help you get the recommended amount. Trying new cooking methods like we talked about in week two, making extra to enjoy later, or adding veggies in soup, stews, or pasta is a great way to get your vegetables. Today we'll be preparing a lovely fall dish using one of the most common vegetables to Americans, potatoes. Often folks peel off the skin, throwing away important nutrients and fiber. I like to leave it on as often as possible in most dishes that use potatoes, especially when using fresh local produce. We start by washing the potatoes and other root vegetables we will be using. Just make sure to wash all the dirt off. I like mixing parsnips, carrots, and rutabaga, but you can use your favorite root vegetables. Trim and cut into bite-sized chunks. We can leave the skin on on all of these root vegetables. Place cut veggies on a sheet pan, drizzle with oil, sprinkle with salt, pepper, and garlic, and toss to combine. Evenly spread the mixture out on the tray and bake at 400 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes, or until fork tender. Add a bit of fresh herbs on top for a garnish, and it's ready for the table. Eggplant is another vegetable you may receive in your produce box, and one that often goes underappreciated. Cooked improperly, it can taste bitter, mushy, and bland, but made well, it can be a major game changer. For a simple, quick recipe, I turn to my favorite Southern Italian recipe for crispy oven roasted eggplant. The trick here is to start by salting the cut cubes of eggplant. This will pull the bitterness out and soften it. I place the cut pieces in a colander, sprinkle with salt, and toss to combine. Let it sit for 10 minutes, and then squeeze to release all the extra moisture out of the eggplant. Place it in a bowl, sprinkle with flour, and add a few grinds of pepper and toss to coat the pieces. Spread this out onto a cookie sheet, drizzle with oil, and bake at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. Remove from the oven, gently stir, and continue to cook for about five or 10 minutes until the edges start to brown and the cubes begin to get crispy. Use in pasta with a basic marinara, sprinkle on a salad, mix with fresh mozzarella and basil, or just as a tasty snack. 
Small farms play an important role in our local food system, and today we have a guest farmer, Laura, from Piece by Piece Farm. She and her husband are two of the many farmers that grew the food provided in your weekly produce box. Um, I've always been really interested in food and cooking. I've always loved it even as a kid and as an adult it's where I get a lot of joy is cooking a good meal and sharing it with people and that's really the root of it. I mean that really is kind of what drives me to farm. Um, I was interested in cheese making in particular and I took a job on a small goat dairy in Maine um, where I just had an amazing mentor who really inspired me. And while I was there, I met my husband. He was working on a vegetable farm. And I moved out here. He was living out here on a permanent basis, just working in Maine for the summer. And eventually I moved out here to be closer to him. And I, uh, it's a mix of things. I mean, because I love food so much, it is, you know, we do choose things that I really like to eat and that we really like to eat, but it's also market driven. You know, it's, there's no sense in growing something if people don't want to buy it. Um, and likewise, I grow some things that I don't care that much about because other people are very enthusiastic about them. So it's also what grows well for you. You know, there's some crops that do better for us than others. So we focus a little more on those as well. Is there something that comes to mind that? That I love growing peppers and snap peas. Um, I love eating those things. I love the plants and they do well for us. Um, on the other side of the coin, I could never eat another snow pea in my life and I'd be fine with that. My mother like forced them on me as a kid. I think we all have some trauma from what we were made to eat as a child. And I don't have any interest in snow peas, but other people like them, so we grow them. You know, it's, it's grown a little bit bigger and then it's scaled back a bit. We were up to nine acres at one point. Um, we've gotten older like we all do. And so um, we're still, we still work a lot and we're very committed to the farm, but we try to find a little more balance in that. And I think, you know, we, everyone starts off with things they're passionate about with a lot of ideals. And while we still cling to a lot of those, you know, there's, there's also a practicality to it. And, you know, at first we were just willing to work really hard all the time and be very stubborn about everything and everything had to be perfect. And um, we were really hard on ourselves and really wanted to be better. And I think we've found a little bit of peace with that and doing the best we can but just also recognizing the limitations we have as people for us it's very it's very community focused i mean i really want to feed the people in my community we're in the south bay area of olympia and for many years we had a farm stand and we got to know a lot of our neighbors and so many of our customers lived really close to us that we really felt a part of that community and, you know, it's, I'm not feeding the world. I know I'm not feeding the world. I'm too small of a farm, but I think providing people food in my community is awesome. And because I love eating and cooking so much, I just love hearing from people what they do with the food and the meals that they share. Well, I think you should decide if you like it <laughs> and start small because at no matter what scale you're doing at, if you want it to be a good garden, you're going to have to put some effort into it. And um, so if you find out, you know, if you plant a few tomatoes and some peas and you really enjoy the work, um, then it's great to scale up. But it's, you know, it's an investment in time and in money to start a garden. So I encourage people to, to start small.